Hey guys, I'm Cameron and welcome back to my channel where we sip tea and also spill the tea as I talk about some of my favorite reads. So in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you all the books that I am planning on reading in the month of December. So I feel like the collection of books that I'm going to be talking about. It's very, very eclectic. There are so many different types of genres. I am going to have a bit of YA thrown in there, a bit of smutty goodness that we all love. It's the spice in our life that we all need. I'm going to be throwing in some paranormal romance and bringing in the holiday spirit. We're going to be having a few Christmas romances. So I'm so excited. Um, let's get into this. So Without further ado, let's get into this video. So the first book on my list is Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. So guys, I recently watched the new live action movie of Mulan and guys, it was so good. So, so good. But I do have to admit, I still like the animated Mulan version um, better than the new one even though guys like it was awesome the new one was great but i love me some mushu um eddie murphy was amazing in that film and i just love the original love story between mulan and the general's son their just relationship together and their whole dynamic between the two like it was amazing and it is literally one of my favorite disney films Ever. But ever since watching the new Mulan, your girl has been really into the whole um, girl who pretends to be a boy type of trope. Like, it is just so much fun and it makes things so much more interesting. Whenever I got my hands on this book and whenever my eyes caught the cover of this gorgeous, gorgeous book, I knew that this was for me. And guys, let me just tell you what this is about. So obviously we're going to be having the girl who pretends to be a boy type of trope, but this is about a girl named Maya Tamron who is a very, very skilled tailor. But in this world, in the time and place that this book is set in, um, girls and women cannot be tailors, especially imperial tailors, and that's what Maya Tamron has her eye on. That is like her dream in life. And her father, he is somebody who, he is known across the land for being a very, very skilled tailor. So in this, t in this day and age, the emperor has just formed a new political alliance with a princess and they are going to be getting married and the princess needs somebody to make her a beautiful beautiful wedding gown and so in order to find the best seamstress the best tailor in this whole world um, the Emperor decides to call on all of the talented tailors across this world and to have them come to the palace and compete in a set of challenges to become the Imperial Tailor. And so our girl, uh, her father gets the message to uh, come to the castle and our girl Maya, she disguises herself as a man to go in there and compete in the challenges. And while she goes there to compete in the challenges, she happens to meet the Emperor's Enchanter and basically those are just like kind of like people that have um, magical powers who can cast spells and do different things like that. And they are basically like a counselor for the emperors and for different high-ranking political officials in this world and in this land. And she meets this enchanter and he is somebody who he's very handsome and mysterious. And so somehow or another, this enchanter comes to find out that she is not a man like she's making everybody think he finds out that she's actually a woman but he doesn't say anything and instead I guess he just like teases her a lot throughout the book and I'm thinking that there's gonna be a little bit of a rom romantic relationship going on between them and throughout all of these challenges there are also going to be some magical events taking place and apparently there's supposed to be like some big 
adventure that Maya is going to be going on and because while she is competing in these challenges she has to make three different magical gowns and to, in order to make those three different magical gowns she has to go on three different singular adventures so yeah that sounds really really cool um, I'm excited to read this. Oh, I'm just, I'm very excited for this book. So that is Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. Okay guys, so the next book on my list is actually going to be a reread for me and that is Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. So guys, the first time I read this book was a few years ago. It was like four or five years ago. I was still in high school. Um, so it had to be like three to four years ago, but I remember the first time I read this, I absolutely adored this book and I felt so scandalized because before reading this, I had never really read like any type of like um, sexy uh, dark books and this book while it is YA there are some steamy scenes in this and I remember the first time reading it I was like oh my gosh like <laughs> what's going on <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this um, <laughs> but you know now look, look at me now um, <laughs> I am the smutty extraordinaire but no I mean I just remember the first time I read this book, I loved it and I was such a goner for Patch. Like, oh my gosh, I was Team Patch all the way. One of my all time favorite book boyfriends. And guys, I just want to, I, I want to remember that. I, I, I want to be transported back to that time. And like this, these past few weeks, my mind has just been for some reason going back to this book hush hush and so i finally got the chance i went to barnes and noble the other day and i saw hush hush and i was like this is my moment like it is time for us to re-explore our amazing and wonderful relationship again so yeah here i am and i'm gonna be rereading hush hush and i'm so excited so if you're wondering what this book is about it this is basically like twilight except um instead of vampires it, there are angels um as you can see the cover like gosh can we just take a second to look at this gorgeous cover first of all um that man that man like <sighs> He may be bad, but um, this good girl right here, um, I'm willing to go bad for this man. I'm willing to take a walk on the darker side of things if I can uh, walk into those arms right there. Because, like, look at those amazing arms. Ah, imagine those arms just, like, wrapping around you. It's like, oh, okay, guys, I need to stop. So, basically, basically, this is, like, Twilight take out the vampires, put in angels, and you've got yourself this book. So this is about a girl named Nora who she's in high school and she gets assigned to be partners with the new guy in school and his name is Patch. And right away Nora just realizes like there's something like off about Patch. Like he's very charming and he's very hot but there is something like really weird about him. Like there, there's just something that's not right about him, right? Um, and as she gets to know him, they start to have a bit of a relationship. And there's also, like, I think somebody out to try to kill her or something. It's been a while since I've read this, okay? But somebody is trying to kill Nora. And Nora is trying to figure out if Patch is her savior or if he is himself the killer. So... If that doesn't sound good to you, then I don't know what does. Guys, if you have never read Hush Hush, please do it. You have to check this book out. It is dark and mysterious. And I still remember whenever I was reading this book, I got, I was getting a little bit scared. Like, the author really knows how to set the tone of a story and how to, like, really get you nervous for the character. And just, man, like, it was scary. And also, guys... One more thing. This is very important. I heard that they're making a movie out of this book. So now is the time 
to read this before this amazing book becomes an amazing movie. So yeah, this is Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. So since we are talking about rereads, there's one other book that I'm planning on maybe rereading this month and that is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. So as you guys know, if y'all watched my last video, um, in my se September, no, excuse me guys, in my November wrap up, I just read Crescent City by Sarah J Maas and just reading that book, it really made me miss Sarah J Maas's writing. Like, I just love the way that this boss of a woman writes a book. It is absolutely wonderful and so addictive. And so, ever since then, I've just been thinking about this book almost as much as I've been thinking about Hush Hush. And so that is why this book is on this video. And this is why I'm going to be probably reading this book this month. So if you do not happen to know what this is about, this is about a girl named Selena Sardothian and basically she is like a really amazing assassin. Her name is feared across this land but nobody knows that the assassin is a woman. Everybody thinks that she's a man and so she's currently captured and she has been spending um, these last few years in prison and while she is imprisoned a prince comes to uh, talk to her he orders an audience with her and he tells her that his father is having a competition and in this competition his father is bringing all of these different assassins uh, to come together and to uh, compete in all these different challenges to so that the one assassin who is left standing, because, because these are challenges to the death, uh, and the last assassin who is left standing, they will be the king's champion. And if you become a champion, then you are also forgiven for all of your crimes. So obviously, this sounds really good to Selena Sardothian, and this prince asks her uh, to compete in these challenges. So our girl, of course, says yes, because nobody wants to rot in prison forever, especially somebody like Selena Sardothian, who is very, very girly in her own right, even though she is bad as heck. This girl likes to go shopping, and you can't do much shopping in prison, so. <laughs> so yeah, basically, our girl goes to this castle, and she starts competing in the challenges, and then there are all these other mystical and magical things going on that is just so amazing, and this book and this entire series is already finished. It is so, so wonderful. So yeah, that is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Maas. The next book on my list is Descending Into Madness by Stacey Marie Brown. And guys, this is actually a Christmas holiday type of book, which I just think is amazing. It's the best time to read this book because, you know, guys, we are very, very close to Christmas now. So I'm so excited to read this. Um, this is actually a retelling of the story of Alice in Wonderland. And this follows a girl named Alice and she happens to stumble upon a world. And this world, instead of it being Wonderland, it is Winterland. And here, uh, in Winterland, there are all of these different infamous Christmas characters like Rudolph, Santa Claus, Mrs. Claus, um, Scrooge. Uh, all these characters are living in Winterland. Instead of them being all happy and saying, tis the season, um, these famous, these infamous Christmas celebrities are not good. They are actually very dark and Alice does not know who to trust. So Alice, whenever she stumbles into this land, um, she ends up meeting Scrooge, who, this is Scrooge on the cover. I don't know if you can see him, but guys, Scrooge is pretty, pretty hot. You know, um, that's a step up for what we all think of Scrooge being. This is not an old man right here. This is a fine specimen of a man. Like, it's just nice. It's nice. <laughs> but no, so 
<laughs> I feel like I'm not explaining this that well, but basically, Alice, it, Alice stumbles into this world of Winterland. She doesn't know what's going on. There is the evil queen who Alice has to fight against, and I think she ends up teaming up with Scrooge and a band of his merry men. So, guys, like, this just sounds so amazing. I am all here for a freaking dark and sexy Christmas retelling of a story uh, because most of the time, you know, whenever you see all these holiday books, they're all happy and joyful and they're all about embracing the magical, a joyful time of the season and you know what guys sometimes I want a freaking dark and dirty Christmas story and you guys like this is just the epitome of dark and dirty and gritty so yeah I'm very excited to read this okay guys so the next book on my list is a another Christmas book and this is one that is all around more happy and more light and fluffy than the other book that I had just mentioned. So this is called In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. So I have heard a lot of amazing things about Christina Lauren. She is somebody who she is known throughout the romantic book community uh, as being like I guess a queen amongst the serfs. Um, <laughs> but no like she is like the romantic writing queen and the other day I was on Goodreads and I was just looking for some Christmas books to check out and I saw In a Holidays by Christina Lauren and I read the synopsis and you know what guys? It sounded really good and I, like I said, I've heard so many good things about Christina Lauren and I've really been wanting to read some Christmas books to get in the Christmas spirit. So what better time to check out this author than to pick up her new Christmas book. So this is about a girl named Naylin Jones who she's not having the time of her life right now. Um, apparently she is just stuck in one bad situation after another. She's living with her parents and I don't think she likes her job and she's just not particularly happy happy and so um, so every year her family spends Christmas by going to this cabin I believe a few other families uh, get, come and gather in this cabin and they all just get together and have fun and all that goodness and so um, Maylin ends up spending the Christmas there and whenever she is driving home she is in her truck or vehicle, she's in her vehicle and she just is not happy and so she makes a request to the universe for it to please show her what would make her happy and so right then and there she ends up waking up in an airplane which is on its way to the location where the cabin is supposed to be at and right then and there Maylin finds out that she is reliving Christmas Day all over again. And so basically this book is about her reliving Christmas over and over and over again and all these crazy embarrassing wacky things happen in between uh, all of these different days which basically ends up having her go back and waking back up in the airplane and all throughout this whole crazy adventure that she's going on uh, I think there's like a bit of a romance that's gonna be springing up in there with Malin and a lucky bachelor and yeah guys this book just sounds so funny and it's totally giving me like Happy Death Day vibes which um, your girl loves that film series. I can't wait for the third movie to come out and uh, yeah I mean I know that our, our girl Maylin she's not getting murdered every day on her birthday but she is having to relive some very embarrassing events which um, sometimes death by embarrassment is so much worse than death by other means <laughs> but what do I know guys but anyways that is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren and that just sounds like so much fun and I'm so pumped to be reading that this month so the next book on my list is another Christmas book and that is the Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. So this is a YA Christmas story and 
just like Christina Lauren, I've heard so many great things about Cynthia Hand, about the author Cynthia Hand, and especially I've heard so many good things about the afterlife of Holly Chase. While looking across the different Christmas book recommendations throughout YouTube, I've run across this book so many times. So many people have recommended this book, so I am going to be listening to their wise counsel, and I'm going to be sitting my butt down and reading this Christmas book this Christmas season. So, this book follows a girl, surprise, surprise, named Cynthia, uh, excuse me, named Holly Chase, and Basically, Holly Chase is somebody who, when she was 17 years old, she was visited by the ghosts of Christmas past and all the other, and the two other ghosts, and they basically are telling her how spoiled and how bratty she is, and she does not learn her lesson, and she doesn't accept that she is spoiled and bratty, so at the age of 17, she ends up dying, which, um, man, that sucks, um, <laughs> and she has to serve penance in her afterlife and basically her afterlife is devoted to her being the ghost of Christmas past in a mission known as the Scrooge Project and this particular Christmas time, uh, this Christmas season, um, things are going to change for her and guys, um, I don't know what they mean by change. I just know that in the synopsis it basically says that that this year Everything is going to change. So, guys, um, that is very, very vague. But I'm hoping that maybe one of the things that's going to change is that there's a bit of a romance blossoming up and coming forth because... <sighs> that's just my favorite thing, you guys. I am a sucker for romance, and I'm praying that this book has romance. I'm hoping. I'm believing. That is my Christmas wish for the year. Um, and I've been a good girl, so please let this Christmas wish come true. Um, I am basically going into this into this book blind. I don't know that much about this story, uh, as you can tell, but I've heard so many good things. So, that's what I do know, and I'm going to accept that counsel and I'm going to read this book. So, yeah. Okay, so the next book on my list is called Trigger by J.L. Drake. So guys, this is an MC book and let's just take the time to reflect upon this beautiful cover. Like, it's beautiful. It's exquisite. And it is so sexy, you guys. Like, I am go like, I, whenever I saw this cover, I just knew that my eyes had to grace the pages of this book and that I had to read this book just so that I can honor the yumminess and the goodness of this cover. Like, it is amazing. Any story that has a cover that is that gorgeous deserves to be read. So, I'm here to do my book nerd duty and to read that beautiful cover of a book. And guys, let me just tell you what this is about. So, this is a dark, a very dark, and very naughty MC romance of a story. So this is about a guy named Trigger who he is like the boss man of this motorcycle club and he ends up meeting a girl named, I believe her name is Tess? Yeah, her name is Tess. He ends up meeting a girl named Tess who gets a job working at the bar that his club calls home and that his club all get together and hang out at. And I believe maybe he owns the bar, so yeah, maybe, I I'm not sure. Um, guys, to be honest, just like the afterlife of Holly Chase, the synopsis, ugh, excuse me, I can't speak, but the synopsis for this story is very, very vague, and I actually had to do a little bit of snooping across the reviews to try to really figure out what this bu book is about, and from what I can see, um, 
it's basically just going to be a very, very dark romance between our man Trigger and our girl Tess. And I think Tess is on the run from something dark in her past. And I think that that is a, one of the key points of the story. It is something that's going to be driving the story. And it's something that we, that is going to be a mystery to the reader until the very end. Until we figure out like what happened to make Tess the way she is and what happened uh, to make Tess feel like she has to run from her past. And I also think that maybe there's going to be a bit of an affair going on, maybe? Like, I think that our man Trigger has a girlfriend or something and he ends up sneaking around on her to take a walk on the wild side with Tess, even though, like, I mean, how much more wild can you get? You're the head of a MC club, so... Uh, this is just like a Monday for our man Trigger, but for Tess, you know, maybe this might be a little bit, a little bit different for her, you know. Um, <laughs> now I'm not sure if Tess is supposed to be a g the good girl of the story or if she's gonna be like dark herself because she is running away from a darker past, you know. So maybe this is just a Monday for her too. <laughs> this is just an everyday Monday for her. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, guys, like. All I know is that this is an MC story. There are some really high ratings on Goodreads about this book. And I'm just so excited to read this book. I'm so, so excited. Say yay. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to the next book. Okay. So the next book on my list is another MC romance. And that is called Gypsy King by Devney Perry. So, guys, this is about a girl named Bryce Ryan who is a reporter and she is living in this small town and she really wants to try to make a name for herself. So she thinks what better way to make a name for herself than to interview uh, a man named Dash who is supposed to be the owner of a bar and he is also a former leader of a MC motorcycle club that resided in his bar. And so our girl wants to meet Dash and interview him because she thinks that even though Dash and all of his former MC club members are telling everyone that their club is no longer a club anymore and that they are good little boys. She thinks that there are other things going on and that this club is still very, very much alive. And so I'm just getting the feeling that this is going to be a enemies to lovers type of thing. And Ooh, your girl loves an enemy to lovers. I am all here for that. And this just sounds so cool. And guys, like, I'm just getting such big Nancy Drew vibes. Like, I feel like, I, like, this is just reminding me so much of, like, Nancy Drew if Nancy Drew were to let loose and follow her sexual side. So, guys, I am beyond pumped to read this book. I am so excited. What more could you want? You know, this sounds fun. Ooh, okay. Next, so the last book on my list is Caravel by Stephanie Garber. So this book it is such a popular book in the YA genre and I have watched so many videos about different people raving about this book and I'm just a little bit behind. I have yet to read this and I thought what better way to end the year of 2020 than to end it reading a book that everyone has just said so many great things about. So this is about two sisters and their names are Scarlet Dragna and Tella Dragna. So in this world that they're living at there is this performance called the caravel that i believe is kind of like a carnival or something it takes place every year and this is something that it's like it's a big deal where where they're living like the caravel is like a huge deal and apparently like the audience gets to participate in this competition that takes place and they i think they have to go on all these different um adventures and 
maybe go through like these different challenges or something. But apparently, um, our girl Scarlett and her sister Tella, they get a invite to attend this carnival and they end up getting whisked away by the sailor who helps them um, get from where they're living with their father all the way to the caravel which I think is I guess quite a distance away from them and whenever they get there Tella ends up getting kidnapped and taken by I think the head of this caravel competition thing and our girl Scarlett ends up finding out that Tella is like at the center of the caravel competition and so Scarlett and I think maybe the sailor they team up and they go through the competition uh, so that they can try to find Tella so this just sounds so good it sounds like it's going to be really fun and wicked and like it's just going to be something that keeps me on the edge of my seat. So I hope that this book is truly as good as everybody is saying it is. If this is even half as good as what I hear people say about this, then it will definitely be an enjoyable addition to my December uh, TBR list. So guys, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please make sure to give me a huge like and to subscribe because I post new videos every week. And it would just be so amazing to be able to welcome even more of you guys into my little side of BookTube. So guys, I hope you have an amazing day and be sure to comment down below and tell me what you thought about all the books that I have on this list. So mwah. thank you so much. Bye guys.